So based on what we've seen so far, it seems that Christianos is most likely not a misspelling in the Tacitus passage, but originally read. Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. When we consider the inscription to Jesus Christos, which was inscribed in the 4th century at a Marcionite church, and that the 4th century Bibles, Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus, originally contained the term Christianos, which is still visible today in the manuscripts. And of course, when you consider the link between Christus and Crestus, and that their difference is only one letter, then it's possible that this was the original label given to the sect we now call Christians. And Sulpicius Severus, writing in the 4th and 5th centuries, would be using the term used at that time, which seems to be Christians. This would explain why the Tacitus document still had the term Christians in it, instead of Christians. It was written by a Christian from the 4th century. But even if we ignore all of what we just looked at, the Tacitus passage doesn't mention Jesus by name, and due to the date when Tacitus penned his annals, around 117 CE, it's quite worthless as independent evidence that the Jesus of the Gospels existed. Suetonius, in the year 121 CE, wrote of riots which broke out in the Jewish community in Rome under Emperor Claudius. The line in question comes from his work, Lives of the Twelve Caesars. As the Jews were making constant disturbances at the instigation of Crestus, he, that is Claudius, expelled them, the Jews, from Rome. Even though there is no mention of Jesus by name and no mention of Christianity, this line is put forth in some twisted, indirect spelling mishap kind of way as some kind of evidence for the historicity of Jesus. At best, it is simply a misspelling of Christus and represents a Christ or Messiah figure. But I'm baffled as to how this Christ figure was able to influence Jews to cause trouble in Rome. Surely, as Tacitus claimed, there were huge numbers of Christians in Rome, and yet Suetonius is either writing about a real person named Crestus, which was a common name at the time, or he meant Christos, and instead of Jews, he really meant Christians. But another thing we might be skeptical about is Claudius expelling all of the Jews on account of one man's instigations. But back to whether this Crestus could be a misspelling of Christ, here's the clincher. Claudius did not become emperor until 41 CE, several years after Jesus had already been crucified. So this couldn't possibly be a reference to the Jesus of the Gospels, for Jesus was never in Rome and died before Claudius became emperor. Some Christians might say, well, Jesus instigated the Jews remotely in visions, and Suetonius just happened to misspell Christ, and the Jews were indistinguishable from Christians at the time. You'll get a real good workout with that much stretching. As for Crestus, it was a common name at the time, so it's more likely that Suetonius meant Crestus instead of Christos or Christ. But again, could there have even been Christianity under Claudius? It would have had to spread like wildfire to cross the Mediterranean Sea a good 1,500 miles in only five to eight years from Jesus' death to the start of Claudius' reign as emperor. Yet history is silent on this sea of Christians in Rome at that time. Yet, even into Nero's day, we find no contemporary mention of a large sect of Christians existing in Rome. Thallus, that's TH, not PH, is another one trotted out as evidence for a historical Jesus. But this piece of evidence is as tenuous as a single thread of spider web stretched across the Grand Canyon. Thallus supposedly wrote about the events surrounding the resurrection of Jesus, but his writing survived only long enough for another Christian, 
Sextus Julius Africanus, writing late in the second century, to record bits of it. But as fate would have it, Sextus Julius Africanus's works hung around only long enough for Eusebius to copy bits of it in the fourth century. Then I suppose Eusebius wadded up his copy of Africanus's work and promptly threw it into the trash instead of preserving such a useful source of information that was so influential on Eusebius. So what we have here is Eusebius claiming that Africanus claimed that Thallus wrote something that seemed to line up with the darkness mentioned in the Gospels during Jesus' crucifixion. Not only is this hearsay about hearsay, but the dates, at least the ones we can cite for Africanus and Eusebius, are much too late to help in our search for a truly independent corroboration of Jesus. Africanus was supposedly born in 160 CE, a full 130 years after the events in question. And Eusebius, from whom we get our Africanus info from, is writing in the 4th century, a good 300 years after the alleged events. Here's the passage in question, and remember this is Eusebius telling us that Africanus is telling us that Thallus is telling us this. On the whole world there pressed a fearful darkness, and the rocks were rent by an earthquake, and many places in Judea and other districts were thrown down. Thallus calls this darkness an eclipse of the sun in the third book of histories, without reason it seems to me. Unfortunately, we have no clue when Thallus may have written, and as Africanus mentions, an eclipse doesn't account for three full hours of darkness. We can easily believe that Thallus wrote sometime in the second century, prior to 160 CE, a full 130 years after the alleged events, so that he was merely repeating what Christians had been saying all along. Lucian or Lucianos in ancient Greek, a critic of Christianity is another you may see flaunted as some kind of corroboration for historical Jesus. But the problem with Lucian, as most of these, is that his writings come much too late in history to be of any use for the question. Lucian wasn't even born until almost a full century after the time Jesus was allegedly crucified. His work, The Passing of Peregrinus, contains criticism of Christianity in the form of satire, and it does include references to Jesus but not by name. It was written around the year 165 CE, about 130 years after the alleged death and resurrection of Jesus. So if he retold the Gospels in their entirety and added new details not even found there, it lends no support at all, because by his day, the Gospel story was well known even by non-Christians. Celsus, or Kelsos in ancient Greek, was another critic of Christianity and in his work, The True Word, which by the way, is no longer in existence, no doubt destroyed by the church, he criticized Christianity. We know about his complaints only because the church father Origen wrote a voluminous eight book rebuttal called Contra Celsus or Against Celsus in which is contained some of Celsus's criticisms. Here's one passage where he basically paints Jesus as a poor bastard who learned magic in Egypt in order to deceive everyone into believing he was a god. 